we're not going to give you the highlights <laughs> and do that, but I think Ross has already done that. What we're going to do is just go quickly through the camp, which is slightly dull, but it's necessary, and tell you what we spent the money on um, in DPAC. But what we'll do in terms of the presentation that we were given here, we'll put that on the DPAC website so that you don't miss that. But I think it's important to try and catch up on, on time. <coughs> so I'll pass over to Linda. I think our income and our expenditure has gone up year on year, but um, we obviously just spent about two and a half thousand pounds on this continent promotion, which was funded by our network of social change, uh, which we're very grateful. Um, and I think at the moment, once we account it for all the cost of that, I think we will have about seventeen and a half thousand pounds in our bank account. Most of that is re-spent funding for specific project work which has to be legal and sort of meet the charity act thing. Um, so we do still have a need to uh, raise non-charitable and non re funding from other sources, um, which is obviously very important for the direct action group. Um, but I think for the foreseeable future, we have um, a lot of money to pressurise politicians of all parties, and I think particularly the Labour Party, um, on the basis that even if they don't get elected in the next, next election, they might have to be able to form a sort of vote. Uh, more effective opposition than they have for the last few years. So we have got some money to sort of pay for meeting, postcard campaigns, um, anything that we basically decide we think would be useful in targeting politicians to get on. what DPAC does spend money on. And remember DPAC started with, with nothing and we could go back to having nothing and we'd still be able to do stuff. But I think one of the most important things... Oh, I've got a question. Sorry. Hi. Oh, sorry. <laughs> do you want to... Yeah, really nice. How much of the money that we've been getting has been coming from the Trade Union movement? That's the first part. And have you received five hundred pounds last year and the year before from the NEP? Because it went through their conference. We got five hundred pounds from the NEP last year. We didn't get anything the year before. Um, we haven't had a massive amount of money from the trade union movement. Most of it has been to Trust for London, uh, which Carla nominated us for uh, the Edge Fund and the Network of Social Change. <laughs> Can I just say, I think there's a lot of money in the trade union movement which should be coming to this back, and it's really up to people. Everyone here, if they're not in the trade union, just join your night. They've got community branches, you don't have to be working to be in the trade union movement. Uh, and therefore, from that, you can go to other unite branches and ask them to make donations of 50 or 100 pounds. There's a lot of money there, and there's a lot of solidarity that could be coming in. I think we should do that as one of our objectives. Thank you. Sorry, if I can ask the if we can actually just finish the presentation, because it will only take one more minute, and then questions is the next item on the agenda, rather than interrupting, because it would just be quicker that way. Thank you. Please be Right. Yes, sir. Okay, so just, just to, to run through this quickly, I mean, you can see what's, what's on there in the line. The, the important thing is um, travel costs to get people to demonstrations because, of course, our income is reducing and reducing on a personal level with all these tax on disabled people. And we find banners, and you can see some of the banners around the room. And for, uh, we've bought some new banners for reclaiming our, our streets of demonstration. In fact, I think we've got about six now. And of course, accessibility, which is very important. So, so 
say the SAS is doing and things to make um, so successful so we've got a meeting and speaking to our cost. We're on kind of on a daily basis these days to provide the speaker from these types to go and talk to um, um, organisations, talking universities, unions and, and so on. And as in the sense, we have the fixed on four specific projects which, which obviously have to be um, spent on this project. And buying DTAC merchandise, and there's some at the back. If people want to buy t shirts, or I think we've got some feelings as well. And DTAC web and maintenance. So, in terms of the public DTAC, this has already said, um, Ed Sun has been very, very generous, and they're really a fantastic organisation which does more than something. It brings people, uh, like minded people together and challenges the issues. So, so we're all facing in the right and correct way. Radical funding group, absolutely excellent. Wainwright, Network Association, saying, and Trust for London. And I'm going to leave it there so we can go back to questions. Okay, I should be secretary. I'm not very good for life. Exactly funded the Green Party, the Green Party. 
Um, it was that one, and it was for the conference in 2011, so it's the past um, um, funding, and um, we have some more to contribute to to retaining our future process. So it was that clear. Oh, can I add one other thing? You might want to try the Joseph Ramsey report stuff as well, they do the same thing. Joseph Ramsey wouldn't fund us, we applied and they wouldn't fund us. Bad luck. Well, thank you very much. Okay, and question to the order of which I've been passed is um, John Lester. I know there's one other hand over here, and then a lady in front over here. So those three questions will be next to that order. Thank you. Hello, Tom Reed. John McCarthy, Black Triangle Campaign. It's not so much a question, but uh, I'd just like to, um, since this is being recorded, um, express our deepest appreciation and gratitude to the Edge Fund. Um, for funding our campaign um, and making a huge difference to our ability to, be able to carry out direct action and to engage, uh, to enable cable people to um, be fully involved in, in, in our movement. Thank you very much for the engagement. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
And we're always looking at other options in terms of the town. So I don't know if that answers your question. I guess I have a 100% uh, stream health here, but I don't know why it's not, it's um, squeezy field. We'll see, we'll see you next time. Yes. Okay, here you go. Thank you. Hello, I'm Jim Bell. I'm the first thing that we use for you is if quite a few organisations offer a certain uh, amount for national groups, regional groups, and local groups. I was just wondering whether these facts could could do it ever at all. Um, try and get a um, uh, idea of what sort of funding we're looking for from local trade unions or local branches or national trade unions or regional groups. So we know the sort of thing is the sort of money we're looking for and maybe um, to help help them to be more inclusive of disabled people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's, um, the, 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 uh, 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 first of all, I volunteered to do the trade union funding, so I suppose that I'm doing it from the current position, I think I have to do it. Um, uh, secondly, uh, you know, I think uh, Debbie and Linda need to be congratulated really on the level of funding, on managing the funding so well, so brilliantly yeah. well done. <laughs> Also, in terms of, uh, in, in terms of, um, in, 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 in terms of, you know, the people who are funding it, if there are any millionaires in the room, then, you know, the contribution would be, uh, would be, would be, would be welcome. I mean, I have to know that Andy Green is an extremely wealthy man, so, um, <laughs> <laughs> probably drop a couple of grand without knowing it. Um, uh, but, 
you know, I think what you're bringing is that it's the beginning. It's absolutely crucial, really. You know, the trade unions are the the last unions that are going to be able to make a difference in the future. And they're going to be very important for the future. They're going to be very important for the future. They're going to be very important for the future. Uh, whose aims we share in many ways. I mean, most trade unionists um, hate this government and hate what they stand for. And, uh, and I think many trade unionists will recognise that what DFAC has done in the last four years has been absolutely crucial. We have been the people who have delivered the most severe blow, actually, to this government. And uh, again, I think uh, particularly Debbie and uh, Linda, who were central to setting up DFAC, should be congratulated. On that. But I think that you know, going to the trade union movement, everybody in this room can join, join Unite. Unite is massively wealthy, massively wealthy. We want their money. Join Unite. Go along to the local Unite branch and put the motion to to uh, to. Fund. What 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 one of the things I will do is I will draw up a model motion and we'll put it on the website. Anybody who's in a trade union, download it. We'll be there within the next few weeks and get your trade union to make a donation. I'm going to take two more questions. So there's a lady over here who's going to speak next, and then the gentleman here. I will not take any more questions on fundraising after that. I'll just really quickly wrap up the discussion because we are now running a good half hour late and we will need to move on. But fundraising is one of those procedural issues where you can bring questions through in a very large number of ways. And really, we just need to check that nobody's buying houses on their expenses or anything. Oh, wait, now that's very <laughs> <good. laughs> <laughs> 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 My name's Elaine, and I'm the chair of the UKU, the teacher and not the one who's in the college. And we have a very large number of disabled students in a learning disability groups who are actually quite often integrated into mainstream parts of and in terms of mental health, oh. um, you know, people who get some benefits from mental health, they're being devastated by this mm. stuff. So I want to say one thing there, I've got my hand up actually to offer to help the fundraiser to do it, the committee to prevent the violence and you know, could do some helping with that, because I don't have the time, so I'm glad to offer you really. Um, but I also wanted to say, just in terms of raising money from trade unions, how important it is, not just to sort of just through the gesture of solidarity, but about strengthening the unions. Where I work is a two-tick disability organisation, and I don't think I would have got an interview if I have a muscular skeletal disability, in fact, if it hadn't been, because I just wasn't getting them anywhere else. But even there, it's been a two-and-a-half-year battle to get the things that occupational health and my consultants say I need in order to be able to work, and it's hard to keep the job, even for me, who is relatively unaffected by disability compared to other people. So for us, coming here, being part of a movement, fighting for the education of our students, and not just for our jobs, of course, that depend on them being able to stay in college, is important. It isn't just solidarity, it's about how we save ourselves and organise ourselves. So it's really, it was just a volunteer to be part of um, helping to raise money and also to invite someone from GPAP, which I'll email you about, because we, we're going to have devastating cuts again this year. And we are basically having a campaign, we do it with our students wherever we can. We'd like someone to come and speak at our public meeting in the college, which is going to be about the kind of education we need and the resources that we need, because we're inclusive. But truthfully, we don't provide the resources that our students need to really be involved. So, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, uh, I just like to say that I'm also a member of the University of College of Union, but I'm a member of the Union Studies Committee, and we are learning our formally affiliated with the DFAC. So I just want to point out that you will probably find that a number of national unions have actually agreed to affiliate with the DFAC, but because we don't have a formal policy on an annual membership fee or affiliation from the trade unions, we therefore don't have money automatically coming in. So therefore, that is very easily sorted out. And as you know, DPAC were part of the, um, the, the, the direct action that took place at last year's annual meeting of the Disabled Workers Committee of the trade of, 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 of the, of the TUC, which um, a number of us will be attending again this year. So that is not a problem to mm -hmm. from the trade unions. It's really just a question of paying a little bit more attention to detail. The will is very, very much there. And I think it's brilliant that DPAC absolutely sees itself as part of the wider fight 
against austerity. I think they're enormously healthy. Our ability to make the kind of alliances that we need to if we're going to be able to turn these cuts around. You might need, need to actually come back once such, everything has actually been uploaded. Uh, not a good location for live stream, unfortunately. 3G is really crap here. Okay, before we move on to that, I would, I'm told that Paul Ellers. Okay. Okay. Wi-Fi here is crap as well, unfortunately. We're giving them a very uh, deep action. Okay, so I believe there are um, and I would like to say thank you very much. You did an absolutely amazing job. What an inspiring speech. Thank you, everyone, to our speakers and had the name. It's not Victor Larkin because it's the wrong accent. It's not Rosa Luxemburg, wrong gender. It might be something like John McDonald. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. 
say. There are three motions. The first one is about uh, whether or not certain people can go on to the steering committee. The second one is about discrimination, okay, and the right of um, the right of racism and scapegoating and what you can do about that. The, sec the third motion is about the size of the steering committee and how big it's allowed to be. And then the fourth thing we're going to vote on is who gets to be on the steering committee. I'm going to take these one by one. The first motion is about people going on the steering committee if they're government honours. Now, I'm going to call on uh, at least two people, possibly three people, to speak about this. The first person I'm going to call on is Andy Green, who's going to tell us why he thinks this motion is a good idea. Then I'm going to call on Simone Aspen to tell us why she thinks this motion is a bad idea. Robert, is this the motion you want to speak on, or a different one? No, it's this one. It's this one. Okay, so I'm going to call on both Simone and Robert to tell us why they think it's a bad idea, in which case I'll open up the floor to one more person to speak if they feel moved to do so as to why it's a good idea to keep the numbers in balance. And I'm going to start with Andy Green because he proposed the motion. Where are you? Yeah, right, there you are. Okay, thanks a million. Uh, thank you, Bill. Um, look, I think the strength of this movement has been about everybody involved in it. Every single petition, every single letter, every time someone lobbied a councillor or an MP, every time people turned up at demos and direct action, and it's never the same old basis. It's always new people. Whenever a space is created, it's always about the people who enter the space and not the people who created it. And what we try to do is build a movement which is built around politics and not people. And I think that we've never played into their hands, into the government's hands or into the media's hands. And I think what they want to be able to do is to identify leaders, to be able to identify and isolate people and to be able to build them up to knock them down eventually the discredit movement to put all the pressure on the individuals and to be able to marginalize those individuals from the movement. I think it's very important that we keep presenting the United Front, we keep presenting different people, and I think once people um, receive honours, then they become the focus. And I think for the media and for the government, and all the attention is put onto those people, and it becomes a bit of a feeding frenzy, and other people's voices, and representation can get lost in that. So I think it's a very important conference that you vote for this uh, motion because what it says is that this is a movement which is about politics and not about people, which is about our rights and the people that carry that forward should not be one person or one group or one committee, but everybody who takes an act or does something which contributes to this movement. We are all valued, we are all as important to as each other, and there's no way that we should allow people to be um, latched onto and held up um, by anybody else. We decide um, who speaks for us, and I think you should support the most. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andy. And I should have actually said, although Andy did just about manage it bang on perfectly, when people are speaking for and against the motion, can they please keep it to strictly three minutes? Uh, can I now ask the motion next?
who got who are who who are who do get awards as a result of the great work that DPAP does in supporting disabled people's rights. Well, I don't agree with the honourable honest system, and I don't agree with the education <laughs> system. I, I think this is a little bit extreme. We're just talking about people who've got a, we've got some kind of award coming to support us who are very capable of speaking. And if some of them have put themselves forward, and I know who they are, I'd be very happy to support fair nomination. Much rather have somebody with an MB or an OBE who's put it for disabled people's rights than somebody who's put themselves forward without an OBE and an MBE stand and have less commitment to a pack. So it is so therefore we must not support this because where do we draw the lines for heaven's sake? People of honorary degrees, people with degrees, people with awards that they might get for campaigning because it includes people and excludes people. So comrades, please, if we're not talking about inclusivity and we're talking about diversity, let's welcome disabled people with or without any kind of award as long as they've got it for supporting our rights and our rights to end oppression. Thank you very much. Okay, can I now call on Robert? also speak against the motion. Thank you. Well, Jack, it's a moment I want to follow up. So I think so exactly what exactly I've been experiencing. I've been in the table for 25 years, and I've done all the roads with people like David Dunn, who are living and who are helping the very world. How are we not here to get people to be inclusive in mainstream society, not to exclude people. We are difficult for the cause against everything that we have done wrong. If you will actually achieve something, you are no longer worthy to us. We are just a free woman, and that is why I stand against this motion. <coughs> Board. 
and two people have spoken out very strongly in brief summary to say why pick on OBEs? Why, um, you know, this is a slippery slope we could go down. We could start dictating all kinds of other reasons people shouldn't be allowed to be on the steering committee, and that's very dangerous territory. And they have also said that um, we shouldn't be picking and choosing, that the steering committee should be open to anybody, no matter who they are. So we've got the two points of view to consider. Uh, do people feel that they're ready to vote? Yeah. Okay. If you... Yes? <laughs> you, you want a question? Yes. Yeah. Oops, sorry. Wait, 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 wait. Could they consider the voters but not desperately to do with one way or the other? Uh, we haven't heard anything about the possibility of getting Very good point. Okay. I'll, I'll, what we're going to do now, I'm going to ask people to vote. I'm going to ask people to vote yes or no, but at the end of that, I'm going to ask if anyone clearly wants to be on record as having a say so they can get to hold of their orange card. Before we go on to do the actual voting, I have three questions. People want clarification. I'm going to go down the back first. And then over here to yourself, and then over here to yourself. So, yes, stand back. Good question. I'm not interested. Um, this is my first time listening. I just want to clarify something. Are we saying that we disagree with the policy? We don't want to take it wider. Does that mean that we disagree with someone like Dory Lawrence? Yeah, I'm the, I'm the Who's Doreen Lawrence? Doreen Lawrence. Doreen Lawrence. Yeah, does that mean that, and I think, whilst I disagree with you on a, on a system of principle, um, I don't, I'm against excluding people, I say just because they've got that, and does that mean that we're against people like Doreen Lawrence? Yeah, is it, can people keep their questions and questions of clarification rather than um, getting reopening the debate for or against? Because we do need to move on. I think we have enough information to make a decision at this stage. Next question. Uh, yeah, I, I just have a question. Yep, oh, answer me. No, 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 no
Well, that's that's really my, my only question. Okay, thank you. Uh, not this, not of this selection. There's not. Okay, so okay, is it a? Uh, I'm not taking any more questions from the discussion on the issue. I will allow you to ask the question if you don't understand how the voting is going to work. Okay, we'll come back to you after. Go ahead, ask your question. What? Thank you. 
community, the rest of us have the right to vote them back on. That's what we're asking you. Okay? Yes. Yes. Just membership of CPAC, not membership of the steering committee. Yes. Okay. Membership right. of CPAC. So they are no longer members of CPAC. No longer members of CPAC, yes. You're quite correct. We are, we are saying that we have the right to ask to leave the organisation entirely. There's two hands, there's three hands I'm seeing in the air. Are these people with strong feelings that you want to speak for or against the motion? I will be keeping these for one minute. And I will say one for and one against. That is it. Because we really need to move on. And we need to just be very straightforward. Okay. I'm seeing a lot of hands. Can I see, please, who's indicating that they want to speak in defense of this motion? One person. Okay. I'm seeing one hand down the back, holding up an orange card. Can I ask that person to speak? And I will keep you for less than 60 seconds. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Um, my name is Theo, this is the first time I've been to this group, and I'm here to support my girlfriend, yeah? And uh, I just think that when it comes to anything that affects our lives in any way, when we I mean, we should take collectively, stand up for ourselves and be heard, yeah? And uh, this is our voice. So, you know, what I'm saying is, uh, rather than doing things individually, we're doing something, you're doing something which is great, you're doing stuff collectively, and we should always maintain that. And people with disabilities, okay, should never be afraid to speak up for themselves. It's, you know, and, um, so, we've all got to fight discrimination in one form or another, so I recommend that you go, if you go for it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I'm going to take one other person. Can no, no. Uh, people with the OBE can, uh, can actually uh, so stand up for a steering committee. So can I have this gentleman in the blue shirt here um, holding up an orange card right now? Uh, I think we'll be the only speaker against him and going to say. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm blind. I'm just joining. This is my first event as well. Um, I'm a lifelong fighter against fascism. I've been on the streets fighting fascism and racism. And I would fully agree with the sentiment of the motion. However, I think there are two fatal flaws in this motion, and I would seriously ask the screen group to take the motion back and rewrite it. The first one is excluding people completely from DPAC. Uh, as the chair said, it's not just excluding people from the steering committee, it's actually excluding people from DPAC. Now, my problem with the motion is this. It says that uh, any discriminatory body, it says that a subjective opinion of a majority of the steering group will decide that. It doesn't just refer to UKIP, it refers to any discriminatory body on, uh, as judged by that majority. So take that on board. That could mean a lot of things. But more importantly, it's a principle of natural justice that somebody should have an appeal. There is no mention in this motion at all of an appeals procedure. If somebody is alleged to be discriminatory, the steering group can chuck them out of DPAC straight away with no debate. Now that person who is accused of discriminatory behaviour, could be a religious person, is against gays, whatever, who knows? That person should have the right to appeal first and have their case heard. Then the steering committee can vote on that. But we should not, as disabled people, deny the natural principle of um, appeal. Okay, thank you for that. We've now heard one argument for and one argument against. Therefore, I'm going to ask people to move straight to the vote. Again, it hold up the green card if you approve this motion and want it to be included in our constitution. So if you with the field, I think I'm going to, I think as a, a top table group, we're, we're very quickly saying that based on what the gentleman has just said, that there would be um, appeal, uh, an appeals process, and we would like that. But in general, with an appeals process added, do people want this motion to go through? If so, please hold up your green card now. 
I think it's carried. Okay, uh, we get the consent. So this motion is very much carried. There's no need to add it to the arms of phrases and carry. We clearly got a vast majority of people voting for it. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the third motion that we need to move on to really, really quickly is the Okay, thank you, Robert Epstein. Thank you very much. Um, can I move on really quickly because we are very much running out of time here. Our third motion is quite simply and straightforwardly to increase the series for the size from 8 to 12 so as to include more people. If you're in favour of this, please raise your green card now. That's passed by um, almost 100% majority. Thank you very much. We can okay, now move on. Everyone has their pass. I hope you've had time to look at it. I would now like to propose we have 11 people have put themselves forward following the due process over the last few weeks to stand on this new steering group. Um, I probably should be carrying this kind of because I'm one of them, but however, can I ask everybody who's put themselves forward for the steering group, that is Andy Green, Bob Ellis, myself, uh, Colin Doyle, who's unfortunately not here, he drank a glass of milk and he was soy milk this morning, but that's said the better. Debbie Jolly, Eleanor Furman, Ellen Clifford, Linda Burnett, Paul Petrie, Roger Lewis, Sabina Lamour. Colin is not here. Can everyone else stand up really quickly? Bob's not here either. Can everyone else who is in the room stand up? Just really, really quickly. <laughs> oh, I'm really sorry. Of course, I'm being incredibly stupid. Um, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, indicate to yourself in whatever way you feel comfortable indicating yourself. Okay, yeah. um, and then, what we're hoping for is a consensus vote that we don't need to do an election between people competing against each other. That we will simply propose this as the new steering group for next year. So can I take votes on that? Are people comfortable that this will be the vote? No. Okay. Okay, I will take very important. We are so long no. time. I'm sorry. Take the very important for the question down here and then up to uh, Behind you, sorry. Yes, please. The lady. Hello, my name is Sandra, Sandra Daniel. Um, and this is my first time at the Main Tax Conference, although I've been a member of the Valley Union. And I was wondering how people got to know that they could support themselves yeah. forward for the steering group. Yeah. Um, as, as a member, of, that wasn't something that, yeah. that I became aware of. So the question is, how did that process happen? When and how? Uh, the, there was notice on the website, and as a member, as a member, you should have got notice about um, how to how to become more involved in DPAC. That was the heading for the thing, and that had the opportunity to join up or um, apply for the steering group. Okay, I, I appreciate that information getting out to people is never 100% people will miss things. The amount of emails on this on a daily basis is legendary. It was put up on the website repeatedly, it was promoted repeatedly, it was promoted on the Facebook page, and it was emailed out to all, uh, all signed up members on our email list. Um, in, in plenty of time, with lots of due regard to process, weeks in advance. Um, Sorry, another question. Um, I see your hand now, but there have been a couple of other hands I saw before that. No. Okay, I'll go with Roddy now, so. Sorry, I, I just wanted to say that, um, look, I, I think that that's a very good question, frankly, and I don't think anybody should be in any way dismissive of it. The point is that 
feedback has grown enormously. The last conference we had was about 60 odd people. Here there are at least 140 people. So clearly we are going to have more people that want to get more involved and take a more active leading role and build the team back upside the country. So I think that it makes sense really that we should try and formalise things a little bit more. I would think that probably there will be another annual conference next year as a consequence of the success of this one. So it makes perfect sense to me that we can actually advertise protocols for exactly how the process will be gone through at next year's conference 50 months in advance. And that's an easy thing to do, and people can therefore make it clear, and it's clear to everybody whether or not they can stand, and also we can advertise in advance the people that are standing and have made their intention to stand on a clear political basis. Yeah. Okay. Hello, I'm going to butt in here because I want to make it very clear that actually being on the steering group is it's not terribly important. We don't just need people on the steering group, we need people involved in working groups, which is the system we set up last time. We need people to help in any other way, and we clearly have a steering group for administrative reasons. Uh, it's all volunteers. We do the best we can. We're really sorry if anybody missed any emails or on on the right list. Um, but basically, if anyone is unhappy and they want to volunteer more time and more help, don't worry if you're not on the steering group. It really, really doesn't matter. Okay, can I take um, Mary? Yes. Yeah. Oh, thank you. You've partly answered what I was going to ask, which is about um, clarifying for people that they could support the steering group. But the other thing that I would say um, is that for next year, um, we need also to explain what the role of the steering group is. So I don't think that's been so clear. Um, yeah, so that people know what it is they're putting themselves forward for a bit more clearly. But I'd like to tell everybody I've been supporting the steering group for quite some time now just because I wanted to and I had something to offer and that was very willingly accepted. Thank you. Um, I, I, I'm aware that there are a couple of other people who want to ask questions. The, first of all, the one thing I really want to press is that the steering group is doing the administrative hard work and it's a lot of hours, but it isn't a position of any particular authority or responsibility. That comes through as a subgroup where the actual strategic decisions are taken and our subgroups will be being formed for this year in the workshop that we're actually missing because we've already eaten through lunchtime and our workshop time. <laughs> and we really do want to move on to those workshops because that's where people will put themselves onto the subgroups around the topics that they are interested in. So I do want to move towards that. So has anyone any particularly enormous objection to the 11 people who are standing and standing as a group? Okay, one point of order, but we do need it to be quick, please. There is an option to co opt somebody on during. Anyone else? Okay. I mean, if anybody doesn't want to be co opted, that is so. We already have two people who want to be co opted on two of the next day. Um, but obviously, if you can't co opt you on two, it's very good itself. So just have to keep trying to tell people. Really, it means nothing apart from the fact that you spend all your time working for this time for nothing. I think it's It's really not that important. You can get involved. You can get involved in the decision making. You can get involved in doing work. You can get involved in everything that we do without actually having some sort of title. I mean, it's really. 
but anyone who does want to be told that that is how you details and obviously we'll have to do something about sorting that out. Okay, thank you. Does anyone get that? If anyone in that field that they have an interest in being co opted, so you actually get involved at the steering group level, give us your details because there is ways of we can explore this. Uh, the biggest question is who's going to get involved in our subgroups for the real policy work happens when we have to move on to these workshops. I'm going to take two more questions, so I'm going to allow one sentence each. One sentence, that's it. So I'm going to go, this gentleman at the front, one sentence, and then straight down the back, for one sentence, and that will be it, and then we'll move to the goal. Thank you. I just wanted to ask whether it's possible for, uh, sorry, whether you have set people uh, who are on the steering group at the moment. At this moment in time, no. There's no reason why it wouldn't be possible, but right at this moment in time, nobody has done. So, So it's, uh, I think we can go yeah, back. Can we just give you just one second, really, really quickly, because it is 20 past one, which is the lunchtime, and we use up half our workshop time. So I think the best thing is to give people the lunch now, which some people can't wait, and then move straight to the workshop after lunch. I'm just consulting with my colleagues really quickly that that's what we're doing. Okay, guys, uh, so we shall be back. Well, I'll probably start uh, last year again too. Well, apologies for quality. It's not a very good uh, 3G signal. It's actually the pit at the moment. I don't know why. Hopefully, it will improve once I uh, I do some stuff here. But then, um, uh, Wi-Fi doesn't work either. Okay. So about that.
the vaccine.